Hello and welcome. The 27th conference of the parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Paris Agreement was held from 6th to 20th November 2022 in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt. COP27 had a few hits and many misses, but would be remembered as a historic one for some big announcements. Let's dive deep to know more in this episode of Endeavor Explains. Simply put, the 27th United Nations Climate Change Conference that was held in the year 2022 is called COP27. From 6th to 20th November, COP27 held high-level and side events, key negotiations and press conferences hosting more than 100 heads of state and government, over 45,000 participants and numerous pavilions showcasing climate action around the world and across different sectors. Egypt assumed the presidency of COP27. The roller coaster that was COP27 was marked by fraught and contentious negotiations through its two-week duration. Right up to the last minute of the conference, which was extended by over 36 hours, the fate of the talks hung in the balance as parties grinded it out through endless huddled negotiations. The conference was ultimately salvaged with many of the most important decisions seeing progress even if dissatisfaction all around was the overall expressed sentiment along with overwhelming exhaustion that had swept across the venue in Sharm El Sheikh. Set against a difficult geopolitical backdrop, COP27 resulted in countries delivering a package of decisions that reaffirmed their commitment to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The package also strengthened action by countries to cut greenhouse emissions and adapt to the inevitable impacts of the climate change as well as boosting the support of finance, technology and capacity building needed by developing countries. The COP27's Egyptian presidency managed one big win, which is the historic verdict on setting up a dedicated loss and damage fund. This was important for developing countries, which made strong appeals at COP27 to compensate countries that are most vulnerable to climate-related disasters but have contributed little to the climate crisis. Along with deliberations on setting a new collective quantified goal on climate finance in 2024, Taking into account the needs and priorities of developing countries, a key outcome was that negotiators managed to avoid backsliding from commitments made at COP26. Governments took the groundbreaking decision to establish new funding arrangements as well as a dedicated fund to assist developing countries in responding to loss and damage. Governments also agreed to establish a transitional committee to make recommendations on how to operationalize both the new funding arrangements and the fund at COP28 next year. The first meeting of the transitional committee is expected to take place before the end of March 23. Parties also agreed on the institutional arrangements to operationalize the Santiago Network for Loss and Damage to catalyze technical assistance to developing countries that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. COP27 saw significant progress on adaptation, with governments agreeing on a way to move forward on the global goal on adaptation, which will conclude at COP28 and inform the first global stockade, improving resilience among the most vulnerable. New pledges totaling to more than USD 230 million were made to adaptation fund at COP27. These pledges will help many more vulnerable communities adapt to climate change through concrete adaptation solutions. COP27, President Sameh Shokri announced the Sham Al Sheikh Adaptation Agenda, enhancing resilience for people living in the most climate vulnerable communities by 2030. UN Climate Change Standing Committee on Finance was requested to prepare a report on doubling adaptation finance for consideration at COP28 next year. The cover decision, known as Sham El Sheikh Implementation Plan, highlights that a global transformation to a low-carbon economy is expected to require investments of at least USD 4 to 6 trillion a year. Delivering such funding will require a swift and comprehensive transformation of the financial system and its structures and processes engaging governments, central banks, commercial banks, institutional investors and other financial actors. 
Serious concern was expressed that the goal of developed country parties to mobilize jointly USD 100 billion per year by 2020 has not yet been met, with developed countries urged to meet the goal and multilateral developmental banks and international financial institutions called on to mobilize climate finance. The World Leaders Summit, held over two days during the first week of the conference, convened six high-level roundtable discussions. The discussions highlighted solutions on themes including food security, vulnerable communities and just transition to chart a path to overcome climate challenges and how to provide the finance, resources and tools to effectively deliver climate action at scale. In parallel with formal negotiations, the global climate action space at COP27 provided a platform for governments, businesses and civil society to collaborate and showcase the real-world climate solutions. The UN Climate Change High-Level Champions held a two-week program of more than 50 events. This included several major African-led initiatives to cut emissions and build climate resilience and significant work on the mobilization of finance. Perhaps the biggest key moment for industry was breakthrough agenda to help make clean technologies cheaper and more accessible everywhere. Some of the other key announcements include Countries launched a package of 25 new collaborative actions in five key areas power, road, transport, steel, hydrogen and climate. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres announced a USD 3.1 billion plan to ensure everyone on the planet is protected by early warning systems within the next five years. The UN Secretary General's high-level expert group on net zero commitments published a report at COP27 serving as a how-to guide to ensure credible, accountable net zero pledges by industry, financial institutions, cities and regions. The G7 and V20 launched the Global Shield against climate risk with new commitments of over USD 200 million as initial funding, implementation to start immediately. Announcing a total of USD 105.6 million in new funding, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Ireland, Slovenia, Sweden, Switzerland and the Walloon region of Belgium stressed the need for even more support for global environment facility funds targeting the immediate climate adaptation needs of low-lying and low-income states. The new Indonesia Just Energy Transition Partnership announced at the G20 summit held in parallel with COP27 will mobilize USD 20 billion over the next three to five years to accelerate a just energy transition. Important progress was made on forest protection with the launch of Forest and Climate Leaders Partnership, which aims to unite actions by governments, businesses and community leaders to halt forest loss and land degradation by 2030. However, progress was snail-paced in terms of raising ambitions to curb greenhouse gas emissions. India re-established its global thought leadership with soft climate diplomacy around life the Lifestyle for Environment movement, making it to the Sharm el-Sheikh implementation plan and launching its ambitious and just transition committed long-term low-emission development strategy, the lt led As India made it vehemently clear, echoed by heavyweights like European Union, the USA and 80 other countries, there is no denying that limiting global temperature threshold requires reducing fossil fuels beyond coal. However, staunch opposition by Gulf countries, especially Saudi Arabia, hindered the inclusion of phasing out all fossil fuels in the final text. Consensus on setting up the loss and damage facility is just the beginning. The real question is how much money the fund will get. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, has already predicted the global temperature rise is heading towards 1.5 degrees Celsius. Climate vulnerable countries like India, whose three quarter districts are extreme event hotspots, will be facing the maximum brunt. COP27 was a testament to the international climate collaborative led by India on all fossil fuels phase down, which is now a set in motion narrative. Overall, the boost from Sharm el Sheikh calls for India to make its local and homegrown climate actions equations right. Between Sharm el Sheikh and Dubai, India needs to step up its climate adaptation actions to climate proof its people and economy. After dynamic twists and turns and intense disagreements that raged through the two weeks in Egypt, 
COP27 will be a memorable episode in the saga of multilateral climate action for reasons both good and bad. While the decision to establish a fund to address loss and damage is indeed historic, the matter is far from closed. Battle fronts are likely to open up again at COP28 when countries are tasked with working out the modalities and responsibilities towards this fund. For developed countries, the brief was clear. The cover decision had to show an increase in ambition over last year's Glasgow Pact. This meant it had to include language that prioritized the 1.5 degrees Celsius warning limit of the Paris Agreement, timelines for global emissions peaking, and the shared burden of climate action explicitly stated. For developing countries, these were a no-go, and priority remained securing the right to pursue developmental objectives in line with the principles of equity and CBDRRC common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. A subset of the developing countries that are confronted with immediate and existential threats for climate change impacts, the priority was to include decisions that clearly stated the urgency of stepping up action. Ultimately, the gavel came down on a watered-down text that showed neither ambition nor conviction. The Sharm El Sheikh implementation plan barely matches the ambition expressed in last year's Glasgow Pact and contains only references to the guiding principles of climate change convention and no clear defense to them. For India, however, the cover text offers some solace in that that includes some language on sustainable production and consumption to lead climate action, which has been the stated objective of life, climate movement launched by PM Narendra Modi last month and the theme of India's pavilion at COP27. We hope that the world leaders will deliver on the climate change agenda and the promises laid down in this year's COP27.